Hi everybody, in this video I want to show you how to install a Debian server on a VirtualBox hypervisor. To get started we want to be sure that VirtualBox is first installed on our machine. You can do that by going to virtualbox.org. In the center of the page there is a download button for the most current version of VirtualBox. When we click on that we're given a list of um, hosting options. Uh, in my case I'm using a Windows machine so um, I would simply click on this it would download an executable file and I would just run that and go through the installation wizard to put it on my desktop. There are plenty of videos out there that show how this, this is done but um, it's a pretty straightforward process as long as you have admin privileges on your computer. In addition to downloading and installing VirtualBox, we also want to uh, download the ISO file for the latest release of Debian. We can do that on the Debian website, uh, debian.org, and from that page we can click on Getting Debian. And uh, once we're here, there's a page that has all sorts of options. Because we're doing this on a virtual machine, we simply want the ISO file. Um, so to get the most current version and to install over the internet rather than uh, fumbling with CDs or DVDs, uh, we can click on one of these two links right here. If you're uncertain as to what uh, architecture, uh, processor architecture that your machine is running. You can get that by going to the start menu and going to computer and right clicking and if you click on properties you'll get all sorts of information about your computer including what your uh, what whether it's a 62-bit or 32-bit operating system so in my case I'm using a 64-bit a um, if you have a newer computer you're likely using the same uh, so we would simply click on this and it would um, download the installer I'm actually in this instance uh, building a mirror of an existing system I have so I actually need a older stable version of Debian. Uh, I can get that by going to uh, by going to release info here at the bottom of the page and if I scroll down uh, the most current stable release is stretch Debian 9 but the system that I want to build a mirror of is using Debian 8 Jesse so I'm going to click on that and from this page I'm going to click on installation information and here I can get my um, I can get my download uh, and again I want to do this online I don't want to fumble with CDs so I'm going to uh, pick uh, the net INST image um, this will allow me to do it uh, online if you're wondering which of these should be picked um, more than likely the AMD 64 is, is what you're going to need. If you're running a 32-bit operating system it would be the um, i386 more than likely. Uh, if you're unsure as to which one to click uh, it's a good idea to do a Google search uh, to figure out uh, what processor architecture your your computer is using. But if you're using Windows um, more than likely it's the AMD 64 or if it's an older Windows or an older uh, computer it's more than likely the i386. I have a 64-bit processor so I'm going to click on AMD 64 and so uh, this file will take a while to download. So now that my file has been uh, ISO file has been downloaded um, to my downloads directory we can get started with building our server. So the first thing we'll need to do is open up VirtualBox. And now that it's open we can see the a number of virtual machines I've, I've created for various testing purposes. Uh, but we're building a new one so I'm going to click on the new button and I'm going to call this Omeka test and um, Omeka being the name of the system I'm building a mirror image of. Uh, we are using Linux and we are using 
Debian 64-bit. If you're using 32-bit, then you would choose the, the Debian 32-bit. And next, I'm going to bump up the memory a little here. And we do want to create a virtual hard disk right now. Um, most of the defaults here uh, are just going to make things easy for us. Um, they kind of do things automatically. So we do want the virtual box disk image. Click Next. We do want a dynamically allocated physical hard disk. And we'll click Next. Um, this system that I am mirroring has about 25 gigabytes of hard disk space so we will create that and so now we have our instance here and there's a couple of things we need to do before we get started first we should go to settings <coughs> and you want to make sure that your test server uh, is is highlighted or your new server is highlighted and um, under the general tab um, I'm just going to point out quickly if you go to advanced um, you can copy and paste to your virtual system if you select um, bi-directional here um, it, it may come in handy for you I don't bother with this because I actually um, SSH into my into my servers uh, I, I find the interface using putty is much easier than using the interface with VirtualBox. Um, so I'm not going to bother with that, but if, if you want to be able to copy and paste uh, from your host to your virtual machine, um, you'll need to set both of these to um, uh, bi-directional. So the other thing we want to do is go to storage and um, you'll see the little plus sign on this disk here and what we need to do is add a drive and I'm going to click on that and choose disk and then from my downloads directory where uh, my ISO file was was downloaded um, I'm going to select uh, this is the file here that I downloaded. Um, I've downloaded this a few times um, in testing. Uh, in any case, this is what I'm going to pick. And then we want to highlight it and click OK. And the last thing I want to do is um, under settings, if I go to network, I don't want um, I don't want this set to NAT. I want a bridged adapter. And what this is going to allow me to do is to SSH into the server. So essentially my virtual machine that I'm building right now, the Debian server, uh, will be discoverable on my local area network. Uh, and it's very important if you want to do the same, if you want to use PuTTY to SSH into it, to make sure that you have bridged adapters selected. So now that I have that, I'm going to click OK, and we can begin the installation process. We want to make sure that our uh, server is highlighted here, and we go ahead and click Start. And I'm going to install just install. I don't want a graphical install. I'm not setting up a desktop environment. I'm setting up a server. So I'm going to stick to just using the command line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and press enter. And I will select English as my language. Uh, United States. American English. Okay, so now that uh, the process has begun, I've come to this page uh, to configure the network. Um, so for the host name, I just want to call this um, Omeka Test. You can call it whatever you would like. And I'm not going to put anything in for the domain name. These are all, this is uh, for testing purposes um, and so I don't really have any need to have a domain so I'm just gonna hit the down arrow and then enter to continue 
Um, and here's a pretty important uh, bit of information I've, I've actually only come across recently. Um, if you leave the root password blank here, um, it will enable you to use the sudo command uh, from the command line. Um, I want to be able to do that uh, without having to go through um, extra steps to make it work. So I'm going to leave the root password blank and I'm going to hit the down arrow and enter to continue. And re-enter the password. I am confirming that I, I don't want one entered. So down arrow and enter. And so um, I'm just going to put in a username here and continue and username for the account will be the same I will put in my password and my time zone, I am in Oregon, so at a specific time. And here I want to use um, guided use entire disk. Um, again, I'm, I'm choosing most of the defaults because it's more of an automated process and just makes life easier. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and hit enter and this is the disk that I want to partition and I will select here all files in one partition and finish partitioning and write changes to disk and I do want to arrow over to yes uh, to confirm that I do want to write the changes to these disks and these are virtual disks so they're not really touching um, anything on your your host drive so you don't have to worry about that okay so now that the base system has been um, implemented um, we're being asked uh, what what mirror we want to use for the Debian archive and depending on where you are would depend on what you select um, <clears throat> I'm going to select the United States. Um, that's that's where I am. Uh, but being in northern United States, I may also find one in in Canada. Um, I happen to know what the nearest mirror to my location is, so I'm I'm going to use that. You could do a Google search to kind of figure that out uh, for your area. But in Oregon, um, I want to ensure that I'm in the United States and then I'm going to use the debian.osuosl.org mirror uh, so this is the uh, Oregon State University um, open source lab I believe is what it's called so um, that is the mirror that is closest to me I'm going to select that I am not using a proxy um, if you're just building a test environment, chances are you aren't either. So I'm going to hit continue. Okay, so eventually I will get the um, I will get this pop-up window, um, and I'm more than happy to participate in how I'm using the packages. Um, so I'm going to select yes. You don't have to. Selecting no won't change anything and um, we'll get a screen for software selection I am not using a desktop environment so um, you have the choice of, of any of these if you're curious about them certainly Google them and and give them a look they're all kind of neat uh, but I am just using this as a server so I'm going to use the spacebar to get rid of the little asterisk next to Debian desktop environment I am not using a print server. I will eventually be using a web server, um, and I'll talk about that more in subsequent videos. Um, typically, using this sort of thing, I'm, I'm, I'm building a LAMP server, uh, but 
I'd rather install things uh, myself than, than go through the kind of standard way of doing it. Um, I am going to keep standard system utilities just so that I don't have to add things later. And I'm also going to choose SSH server so that I can SSH uh, into this server uh, using PuTTY. Once I've used the spacebar to select what I want, I'm going to hit the enter button. Okay, so now I'm being asked to install the bootloader onto the hard disk, um, which we need to do, and I'm going to select yes here, and enter. And I don't want to enter the device manually, I actually want it on the hard disk here, on the virtual hard disk, so I'm going to uh, key down to that and enter. Okay, so now I can log into my system. And the very first thing we want to do is um, run sudo, whoops, sudo if config. Okay, so now I have um, I have my address that I can SSH into under the INET address. There's 10.3.20.142. And so what I'm going to do is just move this over, open PuTTY, and I'm going to put in my IP address 10.3.20. .20.142 and yes I do I do trust this so I'm going to click yes okay so now we are in our Debian server and I do want to make this a little bigger so we can see it change the font okay so now it's bigger so now that we have uh, Debian installed on VirtualBox and it's communicating with our local area network uh, the very first thing we want to do is um, sudo app get update so that we run our updates on here and this will establish um, our repository so you hear, see here we're using the OSU OSL mirror for our repositories and after we run update we want sudo app get upgrade oops Oops, I had a typo there. sudo apt-get upgrade. Okay, so now we have our server up and running. Thanks for watching.